Good morning guys, welcome back for another adventure. I apologize, it's been so long since uh, I've done a video. Feels like forever, it's been almost two months since I've actually been to the reef. It's been forever. <laughs> Lockie's the new captain, he's driving the boat. Got Lockie and Fred out, boys. And uh, really small window at the moment and we're just taking advantage of it. Uh, we don't know what's gonna happen. Literally, I said to the boys last night, um, we'll get everything ready and if the weather comes good, then we'll make a call in the morning. And so that's all. That's what we did. We set our alarms for five o'clock and checked the weather. There's a lot of storms and uh, rain in the distance, as you can probably see offshore. So we'll play it safe and uh, we'll slowly poke our way out, see what happens. But uh, we've got our dive gear, we've got our top water gear, <laughs> got our jigging gear. So we're gonna do everything. Uh, it's been that long since I've been on the water. Um, it's been really busy with business and work and family commitments to the start of the year. So I'm really uh, itching to get wet and um, hopefully we'll turn a reel. Stay tuned and uh, let's see what the day holds. Alrighty, just rigging up. We just pulled out to our first spot and spared you the two hours of traveling out in 15 knot winds, 12 to 15 knot winds. Uh, it wasn't too bad overall, but we got out of here. I've just got a 120 pound leader and I'm tying on a 120 gram berserker jig and Lockie and I, we're gonna have a little bit of a competition. He's going to run the uh, Nomad Squid Tricks and we're going to do a bit of a challenge and see what the fish prefer throughout the day. So that's the jig and you all know what a Squid Tricks looks like and hopefully we'll have some results at the end of the day. Let's go. Awesome. Well, we've been using the new Bathy map updates just to find a new area of the reef to explore and today we're just going to fish all new locations and uh, see what's chewing and we've just stumbled across a little spot here you can see in about 58 meters of water and there's some really nice arches down deep just sitting hugging really tight on the bottom there so very flat bottom and bathy has got us in the area and we've just used the uh, the transducer to sound around and found a few fish so we're gonna have to drop our jigs down and see what's chewing all right let's go boys You all right? Yeah. Nice work, Lockie. Just throw yours forward if you can. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Straight up, man. Come and nail it on the drop, bro. Right? Woo. Yeah. Woo -hoo. Oh, that was crazy. I just felt this tap, tap, tap. I went loose. Oh. Dropped him. He's on. He's on. Okay, what? Set the hooks. Oh, go, Lucky. Fred, come down here. Nice work. Watch the GoPro. Yep. Nice. It's all happening. Go, Lucky. Come here, buddy. Yeah. Okay, you hold this, buddy. I'm gonna help uh, Lucky. Oh, oh. This has been nailed, just sitting there in the rod holder. <laughs> Woo! This is crazy, boys. Holy Jesus. What is he, man? I've got no idea, but he's gone. Oh, he's a good fish. This is crazy, dude. <laughs> wow. Woo! This is crazy, man. We might have to go turn this down. Hang on a sec, bud. I'm hooked up. I literally had the uh, hooks and the rod just in the rod holder. I was helping Fred out. I'm on the wrong rod this one. And uh, you can see, <laughs> I saw my line loose, so I didn't do anything. But these fish are obviously hungry. No one's been out here for a while. Whoa, go, lucky. <laughs> oh, this is amazing, lads. That was special, eh? Oh, yeah. Like, Oh, I've got a little bit of colour here. I don't know what he is. Oh, he's a. That's all right. Still fought like an absolute freight tra train. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Go, Lucky. Oh man, he's a good fish, Lucky.
right? Yeah. I'm stuck. <laughs> it's all right, you go to the gym, Lockie. Absolutely stunning colours on this fish. Let's throw them back in. Woo! Hold the spool. Just careful not to knock the bird for her. Yeah. And then just hold the spool still. I got it. Yep, don't let it. Alright, I'm gonna drive forward on it. Yeah. Alright. You're off? You're gone. I thought I'd just quickly pause the video here. Uh, please stay to the end of the video because I actually spend uh, you know five minutes or so just quickly talking about fishing strategy which is not often talked about um, having a game plan when you hit the water and I also share quite a few tips in terms of hitting the reef if you're a first timer hitting the reef and ensuring success on your trips and minimizing those donut sessions which we all hate <laughs> I also uh, actually spend quite a bit of time or a couple of minutes just uh, running through and showing on my computer screen how uh, the new Bathy map system uh, looks like and how I like to use it uh, to target different species and, and look for locations. So catch you guys on the back end of the video. What is he? Oh, he's a nice trout, man. Woo! <laughs> what a cracker. <laughs> Big strawberry. Go, Lucky. You all right? Here we go, got a bit of color, mate. Could be a pigeon pair of trout. Oh, yes. <laughs> Lucky. Come here, mate. Walk back, I got him for you. Yeah. Bail arm open, champ. <laughs> oh, well. We've got a beautiful pigeon pair of massive stonker trout, man. Yeah. Well, what's that? Three, one. <laughs> you got sharked. <laughs> that doesn't count, right? We didn't even see a shark. It was a big fish. Okay, fine. It was a big fish that we couldn't wind in. I was uh, getting there. <laughs> I was making headway, and no, Johnny's like, no. <laughs> There we have it, beautiful coral trout. I brain spiked him, you can see the colors. He's just come really prominent after I brain spiked him because he's dead now, he's passed away. And uh, that's the best way uh, to obviously store them and keep them on ice whilst you're fishing because it just ensures really nice uh, eating quality. But uh, this fish is absolutely stunning. Couldn't resist the uh, berserker. And uh, Lockie got a really nice one on the squid tracks as well. So no complaints. We're gonna one line all. Up, yeah, one all there. We're going to line up another drift and see if we can catch a few more. Trouty. Oh yeah, I'll take him. Woo! <laughs> the Berserker taking the lead yet again. <laughs> I think it's 4-1 to Lockie now. He's still running with his quick tricks, but uh, yeah, get him on ice and uh, go again. He's a good fish. Oh. Oh, he's a good fish, man. Yes. He's a nice fish, man. Please be the right colours. Oh, is he? Oh, you're kidding. Oh, he's huge. Oh, that's why he went so hard. Oh, absolute beast. Oh. Woo. Now that is a serious sig monster. 
almost a pigeon pair of big threadfin sea perch coming now, the 120 grammar berserkers, the blue and the gold. Absolutely cracking fish, so we'll get these hooks off and uh, see if we can find another type of redfish. Yeah. All right, let's go. All right, off they go. Yes, yeah, go Fred. Yeah, go Fred. Go Fred. Is it? That's a trap. Yeah, oh, yeah, nice. Okay, what's your toes, bud? Open your bail arm. Yep. Good one. Nice, man. <laughs> yeah, nice work, Fred. There we have it. Fred's got his first uh, coral trout on the 120 gram berserker jig. How was that? Good, pretty good fight? Oh, yeah. Did you just play first? <laughs> <laughs> nah, nice. Beautiful looking fish, mate. It'll taste even better on the barbecue later. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, let's line up another drift. Yes. Oh, yes. He's on. <laughs> oh, just got down to the bottom. It's coming now. That Okay. Go get him, mate. Beautiful thing about exploring this boat. Touch there. Yep, got him back. Beautiful thing about exploring these spots is you just don't know what you're going to hook. I don't know what he is. He's given out a. He's run out of puff. With a leader. Oh, he's another nice trap. Hooked him sideways a bit. That's all right. Take him. Big lift, and that was a good fish. As I was jigging it up. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. What is he? Oh, <laughs> it's like we found a strawberry patch, buddy. Yeah. These trout are really nice fish, man. <laughs> That's a really nice, healthy uh, coral trout there. As you can see, it's nailed the 120 gram. I haven't lost a jig at all this morning, which is pretty cool. Now that I've said that, I'll probably lose it next drift. But uh, yeah, absolutely stunning fish there. Alrighty, gonna get him in the ice box and uh, go again. Go, Freddy boy. What do you reckon he is, buddy? Huh? What do you reckon he is? I don't know. <laughs> Keep winding, don't stop, you're doing well. That's it. Here we go. Thanks, buddy. Oh, another cracking trout, buddy. Okay, watch out, your toes. There we go. This time, Fred's been using the 120 gram. Uh, it's like a pink and green with white striped berserker. How good. Freddy boy. Yeah. Nice work, man. Nice good. color. Yeah, beautiful color. Alrighty, some beauty school just in the distance there. Try and get a cast in there just on the edge. Let's do a quick retrieve. See if we can get one to come follow it. Let's 
try a slower retrieve here, just sweep and pause. Oh! oh. Had a swipe at it. <laughs> yep. Oh. Got him. Dead sticking it, man. <laughs> that was cool. I just left it there. He came and nailed it. Oh. This guy hasn't woken up yet, man. Wow. He's just staying deep. It's a nice fish. Oh, look at that. Is he a good model? Or? Yeah, he's a decent one. He's a cracking juice. Is he? Yeah. Oh, yes. Woo! Nice cheat. Um, this is a solid one. Now I'll meet you down the back. All right, I'm going to grab the leader. <laughs> Bail arm open. <laughs> awesome fish, man. Oh. Oh. Okay, thanks, Fred. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Lucky. <laughs> Sometimes you don't always need to do a fast retrieve. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> there you go, big guy. Cracking GT up on the edge of the reef flats. We saw the fuse, he's just working. Wind's dropped right out now. And uh, he's an absolutely cracking specimen. So, we're gonna see if we can get the boys on a some. And then we'll probably jump in the water. Just give him a good swim. Feel that kick. All right, off he goes. Nice. on the edge of that fusy school. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. Big tail. Oi! Go, go, go! <laughs> Keep going buddy. Keep going. <laughs> Go lucky. Keep mate. Keep him off the reef buddy. That's it. Keep going. You Don't stop mate. Yep. Yeah. Keep going buddy. Keep winding. Keep winding. <laughs> nice work buddy. Keep going. You want to keep him off the bottom. That's it. It. Nice work, man. That eat was spectacular. Oh, yeah. Quick Dang retrieve, eh? Oh. Phew. It's a nice fish, man. That's it. You shuffle down the back, bro. Locky, come down the back. Nice work, man. It's a nice jeet. Walk him down, keep your rod out. That's it. Nice work, man. All right, just yeah. open your bail arm. Okay. Nice. Yeah. He's just strong, man. <laughs> All right, watch out. I'm gonna just spring him around the back. Nice work, Loggy. High five, man. You. Nice work, buddy. Finally got a nice Jeep for you. Yep. Off the surface on the stick bait, man. Super quick retrieve and buffed. Let's go. Straight on. <laughs> That's epic, dude. Uh, awesome, man. We'll get him back in the water. All right. Give him a real good spear, mate. Oh, 
he goes. Phew. Off to terrorize a bit more bait. Lucky, we did it. Yes, we did. Thanks, buddy. Woo! There's a shark just back there. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. <laughs> Good, nice, job. Nice Good job. Nice job. Huge blue. Oh, That's all right. All the way to the boat. That's it. All the way in. All the way in. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Nice work, Fred. Very nice. Woo! Bradley. Hey. Woo! Nice work, well, I thought I'd take a couple of minutes, guys, just to quickly run through and talk about fishing strategies. It's often not talked about, and I think it's really important to have a game plan when you hit the water. Uh, otherwise, you know, you can sort of get out there and you know, when you're fishing on the Great Barrier Reef, uh, you instantly think, you know, it's just going to be full of fish. Um, they're all going to be jumping into the boat. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, that was, uh, it's the opposite of, of, of what I uh, thought to be true when I first started discovering the Great Barrier Reef. And, uh, you know, it's a very vast piece of water and there's a lot of structure and it can be a little bit overwhelming for uh, first timers or if you're new to fishing on the reef uh, and it's something you want to go off and explore and do and so I thought I'd put together a couple of uh, pointers and just to give you a bit of a guide if you are starting out and you're planning your first reef adventure uh, these are some of the things that you should be looking for uh, when you're or thinking about when you're planning a reef trip so firstly it's really good to be using a mapping system uh, when you're at home and you're pre-planning a trip uh, that's coming up and you basically want to use something like a bathy maps and whatever your preference might be uh, to to research a location and I'll just spend a couple of minutes now showing my computer screen uh, and how I like to look for ground and what sort of fish you can typically find in different depths and, and what locations. So I'm just on the computer here as you can see and I've got bathy maps uh, up on the screen. This is the latest version of bathy and they've just recently done a, an update and you can see that uh, it's all color shaded, uh, different contour lines and whatnot. Uh, in terms of fishing strategy, when you're looking at going to the reef for the first time or planning a trip in a new location, uh, it's always handy to jump on a mapping system, whether it's Bathy or something else that you prefer. 
Uh, and, you know, usually there's going to be fish, obviously, sitting between the mainland and the reefs themselves. Sometimes the uh, trying to master the locations between and find the locations between uh, the mainland and the reef can be a little bit trickier because of accessibility to many other boats. And sometimes some of these areas may have been, uh, you know, hit hard from other boaties in the past, other fishermen. But there definitely are still some really good wrecks and other uh, pieces of structure between the mainland and the reef that hold really nice fish. Um, at the moment with the overlays, I've got points of interest open at the moment uh, or selected. And that way it's showing all the uh, different wrecks that are available out there and also other points of interest. I've also got the marine park zoning option on and the depth con contours and that way uh, you know, if you're fishing and zooming in an area that you're researching, it, it shows you, uh, you know, here you can see it goes from 64 metres over 60 metres here, and back over here at 68 metres, back over here it's around 56 metres, and so it just gives you a little bit of a guide as to the contours and the bottom seabed and the structures uh, sitting around. And what I like to do is typically pick, you know, six to a dozen different reference points and plug those into my sounder as I'm going along and that way when I'm traveling out towards the reef I'll have you know half a dozen or a dozen spots that I've got marked already in a new area that I can go off and research and then I'll typically let my transducer do the rest and watch the screen on my Simrad and just uh, you know mark any points or go back over spots where I can mark you know spikes of fish or really nice pieces of structure. So I'll do a bit more of a detailed video in videos to come but in terms of options you can see there's magma, uh, deep, original and you can see that slightly changes the the look and the detail um, on the maps and they've also got a really nice top water layer as well so if you're thinking of throwing top water lures uh, I've just got to change some of the settings so if I take off marine park zoning you can see the top water layer isn't distorted and you can see uh, you know, little blue holes and different cutouts and sections of the reef, um, which is obviously handy. So the fundamental principles of fishing on the Great Barrier Reef, uh, do doesn't matter where you are, up and down the whole entire Queensland coast, if you're chasing top water fish, generally speaking, uh, the current's going to be running in from the north in some direction. Sometimes it could be from the northeast, sometimes it's from the northwest or straight north. Uh, when the current's running out, typically it'll be running out from the south or the southwest. And, uh, you know, these are the pressure points depending on which way the current's running uh, for your pelagic fish like GTs and Spanish mackerel and things like that. Um, a great place to be starting for your reef fish and trout, red throat, things like that would be all your small little bombies just on the edges of the reefs. Uh, you can get Red Emperor and Nana Guy and stuff like that in that 30 to 40 metre depth as well off, off the reef fringes. And between reefs or off the back edge on the shelf side, uh, if you do find those isolated bombies and pieces of structure out this side, you'll obviously uh, you know pick up your better quality reds and uh, trophy reef fish that you're chasing. Now, our old university lecturer always said to me, he goes, uh, you know, if you're not asking questions, you're not learning. And so don't be shy to ask questions from others um, that are might, maybe more slightly experienced than you in terms of targeting that particular species. I find that 90, 95% of the people in the fishing community are pretty helpful if you ask in the right manner. Uh, there's probably the odd couple of people out there that might want to just keep their intellectual property to themselves, which is fair enough because uh, they've put a lot of time and effort into obviously finding and targeting those particular species. Uh, but the general fishing community, everyone's pretty open, pretty willing to share, uh, you know, general concepts and, and rough locations as to where to start searching for things, uh, you know, when you're heading out there. So keep that in mind. So having the right equipment when you're targeting a particular species is really important. Um, you know, ensuring the right rod and reel setup, uh, 
you know, leader sizes, lures, baits, you know, decide what you want to do and go out there and be prepared. Um, you know, if you go get out into the water and then you start thinking of a game plan then, it's probably a little bit too late. And so everything I'm running through today is to just uh, ensure success in your trips and that way you maximize uh, your success and minimize any donut sessions that you may have. Even and, and I can firsthand tell you guys, you know, I've spent a lot of time on the water. I've had multiple donut sessions out on the reef in my early days and uh, you know, it takes a lot of time and effort to drive around, explore, find out what works on different tides and times and moon phases, current, so many different factors at play. Uh, come into play when you're out on the reef so just keep that in mind if you are traveling from uh, a far away distance to get to the reef uh, you know some real quick basics you know just make sure your trailer bearings uh, your trailer has been fully serviced and maintained before you hit the road uh, for obvious reasons number one safety and you know if, if you have troubles on the highway sometimes due to the time of, of when you're traveling there, the shops aren't open and you can't access different parts. So you want everything, you know, going in your favor when you're doing a big road trip. Uh, and yeah, safety is obviously a big factor. I typically like to bring spare hubs, spare bearings, all that sort of stuff so that if I do have troubles on the road, I like to just be able to pop the new hub, pop the old hubs off, put, pop the new hubs in and just hit the road and keep going. And so typically in my uh, car boot, I'll always travel with a whole bunch of spare tools and uh, equipment that I can use to be able to easily, quickly change uh, tires or bearings on the side of the road if I have to. Now, one of the most important factors when you hit the reef uh, is to be fully aware of your tides. Now, tides dictate and determine so much when you're fishing out on the reef and depending what style of fishing you want to do, uh, you know, a high tide, for example, uh, a run-in high tide, you typically want to be fishing the flats uh, if that's something of interest for you and doing top water stuff as the tide's pouring in and filling up the, the reef uh, and the blue holes. If uh, there's small tides, well then you may want to consider um, bottom bashing is a little bit easier or jigging on the reef so uh, the deeper edges of the reef are a lot easier when there's neap tides because there's less flow. And so if there, are, if there is a lot of run predicted on the trip that you're planning, um, being the full and the new moons, which usually typically provide really good bite windows uh, for, your, for your reds and nannies and other trophy red species, uh, you definitely want to concentrate your efforts on the low and the high tide, high tide change, perhaps sort of 45 minutes to an hour either side of those tide changes to maximize your success. If you are planning to fish the blue holes, uh, it's really important to understand how much your boat draws and you know if you draw 30 centimeters or 50 centimeters then you want to factor that in at the time of the tide of when you're crossing over the reef because uh, you can get stuck in these blue holes that you end up fishing in and it could be you know three to four hours before there's enough water for you to then get back out of those uh, reefs so just be mindful um, if there is bad weather or you need to get back home in a hurry just be mindful not to get trapped into those blue holes if you are sleeping in blue holes and, and lagoons at night which i've done before um, if you are spearing as an example in those blue holes as well that adds an extra element of risk um, so, you know, if someone was to get bitten by a shark or get stung by a dangerous jellyfish, as an example, you need to go get medical help. Well, if you're stuck in a blue hole and you can't physically get out, well, then you either need to use your EPIRB or um, use a satellite phone if you've got one or use your radio or some other form of communication to try and get help. And so it's really important to not uh, do your best to... Uh, no one ever plans for accidents to happen on the water, but things just happen inevitably. And so just be extra mindful if you are doing those sort of things um, and you're trapping yourself in the lagoon for a couple of hours on that low tide change. Um, you generally don't want anything to go wrong during that, that window because it's going to be pretty tricky to get back out. And typically in these reef flats when you're casting your lures, you're going to be finding, you know, coral trout, um, you know, your GTs, spangled emperor, long nose emperor depending on how far north you are on your reefs uh, you know you're probably going to get the odd uh, Maori humpheaded Maori wrasse as well 
and there's a whole variety of cool looking uh, species when you're on the reef. Very, very scenic and uh, definitely encourage you guys to hit the reef flats. A heap of fun and a very visual form of fishing. So the deeper reef edges, of course, as I've spoken about earlier, that's where you're going to find your reds and nannies. Um, and traveling between the reef systems on your deeper sections in that 50 to 70 meters of water is where you're going to be uh, finding those isolated lumps and, and structures for your reds and nannies. If you're into chasing doggies and uh, some of those bigger pelagics, then on the shelf side, right on the eastern ledge of all the main reefs, off the, up and down the entire Queensland coast, uh, that's where you're typically going to find your doggies and other species like that. Uh, it's on my bucket list this year to go and hit some of those reef edges because I haven't actually hit the uh, the reefs. Uh, I haven't actually hit the shelf uh, too much in, the, in over the last 12 months at all. Something I didn't mention earlier, but uh, when you do have a game plan and you hit the water, um, you know you might have option A, option B, and option C, and have a backup plan. Uh, if something's not working on the day when you hit the water for whatever reason, you've got to be willing to be adaptable and change your plans. Um, for me, when I go fishing, I just want to make sure that I have fun. And generally, if I catch fish, I have more fun. <laughs> Even though being on the water in itself is really nice uh, and therapeutical, uh, catching fish is obviously a bonus, but uh, definitely adds the excitement levels of a trip. And so when you want to maximize your fishing trips to have fun uh, with your mates, uh, you know, having that game plan and strategy and be willing to be adaptable and uh, change your strategy to suit the day and the conditions, uh, I feel is really important. So I've just realized that we didn't actually uh, provide the results from our little fishing competition that we had on the water between Lockie and myself. Uh, Lockie was fishing with the Nomad Squid Treks and I was fishing with the Berserker Jigs and this test wasn't to uh, name and shame or rag any brands or anything like that. Um, it was just more so out of interest, you know, did vibes work better on the day versus um, using jigs and things like that. So um, on the day I sort of outfished Lockie, you could say, and uh, these Berserker Jigs did really well. But uh, we'll probably do this test over four or five trips and I'll use the Nomad Squid Tricks as well um, on some of these future trips just to gauge, um, try and get a, you know, a fair and equal presentation for both and see which lures work better. And obviously there's so many varying factors in terms of tides, who drops where in the boat, um, timing of it all and how we work the lures and etc. So there's a lot of different variables, but uh, yeah, um, safe to say they definitely do work. And I think, you know, this little um, squid covering over the hooks uh, definitely attracts the fish um, to come and come and nail it on the drop and they can't resist it. Well, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, I've enjoyed bringing it to you guys. It's been a while since I've hit the water, so feeling super refreshed. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video over the Easter break and we'll catch you guys on the next episode.